How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake and welcome to this Star Shovelware review of Hyper Parasite. As always I ask that you hit the like button if you enjoy this review and sub to the channel to be notified of future indie game reviews. Now let's get started. So Hyper Parasite is a rogue light adventure game with a top down perspective. Now rogue light, for those of you that don't know, differ from standard rogue like games as elements of progress that you make in your runs carry over to subsequent runs. The game opens with a plotline as ludicrous as any 80s action movie. A parasitic alien being which is able to take over people's bodies has come to earth. The president who's a bit pissed at this believes the parasite wants to take over his body and release nuclear arms on the planet. So he declares a state of martial law granting everybody the right to bear arms to hunt down this alien life form. And by everybody, I mean everybody. Everyday citizens, criminals and convicts have teamed up with police, soldiers and special forces and they're all out to get you. As we hit the main menu we're instantly slammed with a heavy dose of 80s nostalgia as the neon title sits there looking all sexy like and some retro wave style beats are pumped into our ear cavities. Beginning a new single player game we're dropped into the tutorial which teaches us the basics. The game features standard twin stick controls and we begin as the parasite. In this form we can currently only take one hit and our health is indicated by the blue square under our beautiful portrait picture. We're introduced to the attack button and after shooting a few barrels and crates we move on to the next area where we learn how to dodge, during which we're invincible. Entering the next area we then learn how to body snatch which can only be done at short range indicated by the blue glowing ring around us. After getting in range and activating our ability we take control of a horse and it's this unique body snatching mechanic which the whole game is built around. Each horse comes with two abilities which consist of a standard attack and a special ability and the horse's health bar is shown below its portrait. If the health of your host falls to zero, they'll die and you'll be ejected from them, returning to parasite form. You can also manually exit the host by holding the X button on the Switch version of the game. Should you take a hit in parasite form, then it's game over. However, you'll find upgrade puddles at random as you clear areas, which can be absorbed to upgrade one of three stats. The first of these are parasite lives, allowing you to take more hits in parasite form. The second are attack upgrades, which improve both your host and parasite's primary and secondary attack powers. And the last are defense upgrades, such as your host's max HP, movement speed, or dash distance. These upgrades can also increase your luck stat, which is very important as it increases the chance of items and currency dropping from enemies and containers. Upon completing the tutorial area we head into the intro level called Outskirts where we learn how to unlock new characters. Initially you'll only be able to enslave a few of the enemies, others will have a lock icon above the heads which will reject your attempts at body snatching. In order to unlock these new characters you'll first need to defeat an elite version of the enemy. These are identifiable by the red ring around them and a shield icon above them. Upon defeat, an icon will appear over the corpse, which upon activation will cause the brain to burst out of the skull, grow a set of legs and begin following you. You then need to escort this brain to the game shop, run by this shady looking fellow called Witto. In a room off to the side of the shop, you'll find the laboratory which contains capsules, which your new brain friend will gleefully hop into. Once inside, it'll incubate and you need to spend currency to unlock the new character. This currency can be added bit by bit or all at once, and progression towards unlocking is carried over through runs. Once unlocked, you'll then be able to body snatch that character when you next meet them. Within the lab you'll also find three cryogenic machines, which for a small fee, will allow you to store a horse body which you can then retrieve at any point in your current run. So the general gameplay loop involves you making your way through each area of a randomly generated map. Opening the map, you're able to quickly teleport between cleared areas in a manner that players of Enter the Gungeon will be familiar with. When you first enter an area, you'll be locked in, and enemies will begin to spawn, crawling out of manholes or appearing from doorways. You then have to kill all of the enemies before the doors will unlock, and then you'll be able to proceed to the next area. You'll also find breakable containers in an area which you're going to want to smash open, as they can contain currency, health or special ability recovery items, or active items. The game features a wide variety of area layouts within each level and several of them are themed such as the bridge with its reinforced bunkers on each side or the sewers with its rat infested area containing rubbish piles which you need to destroy to stop them spawning. There's also a store in each level which contains a lab and also sells items. These can either be active items shown in green or passive skills shown in purple. Each item has a rank from 1 to 5 with higher ranks being more powerful but costing significantly more. 
active items are single use abilities which offer a wide variety of effects. Some create patches of fire or lightning which deal damage to enemies over time and others place static turrets or release drones which will follow you and fire on nearby enemies. Passives on the other hand enhance your character in different ways such as making your attacks set enemies on fire or bleed and these remain till your current run ends. You'll also often find a key item in the shop such as the sewer key which will allow you to enter additional side areas found in different levels. The final feature of the shop is the shop sale. In each shop you'll find a picture on the wall featuring one of the enemy portraits. If you then return to the shop whilst that enemy is your host you'll trigger a shop sale which will reduce the price of all shop items as well as the cost of character unlocks by 50%. In addition to the standard enemies, you'll also usually encounter a sub-boss within each level. There are several different sub-bosses who generally offer a much more challenging fight and whose characters are often references to 80s movies, such as Michael J. Wolf being based on Team Wolf starring Michael J. Fox, or Rocco Marcelino who is of course supposed to be Rocky Balboa. When defeated for the first time, sub-bosses will drop the brain allowing you to unlock them, though they're significantly more expensive compared to the standard enemies. After working your way through the level, you'll eventually come to the gate which leads to the boss. It's advised that you clear the whole level and upgrade yourself as much as possible before taking on these bosses, as the nails. The first level boss, Double Trouble, sees you taking down two armoured SWAT vans and it took me about 10 attempts before I was finally able to beat it. Boss health is shown at the bottom of the screen and after dealing about a quarter damage to one of the vans, turrets will appear on top of them. One of the turrets locks on and fires bursts of projectiles at you while the other sends out projectiles in a spiral around it and all the while you've got standard enemies spawning just to add to the chaos. Upon defeating the boss you'll be rewarded with a large amount of currency and a final shot before you proceed to the next level. There are three different exits to the first level but only one of them is available to begin with which leads to level 2. So after playing for several hours, I'll summarise my thoughts of the game so far. To begin with I'll start with the main positives. I thought that the game put a great spin on the usual roguelike experience of collecting weapons and upgrading your character with its body swapping mechanic, something which I haven't seen done in a game of this genre before. There's some good character variety and though there are only really melee or ranged characters, the variation in their attacks is unique enough to make them play slightly different. I also like the roguelite element of unlocking characters as you play as it gives a sense of progression to each run. Level design and variation was decent and being able to take several different routes through the game was a welcome sight. The number of different passives and active items to collect wasn't too bad but several of them were a bit samey such as there being 5 different damage over time effects reused in active and passive items. So now on to my main gripe with the game, which revolve around some major balancing issues. Although the body snatching mechanic is what sets the game apart, it's also where the majority of these issues occur. In the first stage you begin with three characters unlocked, which provides you with enough horse to begin unlocking additional characters after several runs. The first stint of problems start to arise with the sub bosses, who always kill your host in one hit. You're then left praying that the one host that spawns in these battles is one that you've unlocked, or else you're practically screwed. And even if you do obtain a new host, the sub boss is likely to one shot you again after a few seconds, unless you cheese the shit out of it, like I did here. In general, progression through the first level is pretty easy with there almost always being a new horse to jump into if your current one dies. But again, there's a massive spike in difficulty when you reach the main level boss. In this fight, there are a lot of projectiles flying about which can kill you in a couple of hits. As with the sub-boss, you're then left hoping that an unlocked horse spawns, but more often than not, the more expensive horse will spawn and you're pretty much fucked with all the shit that's flying about. If your experience is anything like mine, you'll die a lot from the boss because of this and end up spending a lot of time just unlocking horse in the first level. If you do manage to defeat the boss and get to Asia Town, you'll also have a fight on your hands because you won't yet have any horse unlocked in this level and none of the horse from the previous level spawn. This means that you get one shot in your current horse body and if it's killed by the new enemies, you're stuck trying to defeat them all with a parasite, which is much more difficult and a tediously slow ordeal. You'll likely die several times in the first couple of areas of level 2 and end up having to restart all over again. This is a problem which could easily be solved by having one or two horse already unlocked on each level. 
Another area which could do with a bit of improvement is currency gain. The drop rate of currency from enemies and containers is pretty poor, unless you bump up your luck through upgrades. There are usually only a couple of upgrade points in a level, which sometimes means you'll gain very little currency, and shop items appear at a random grade and often cost far more than you've actually managed to earn. It'd be great if every defeated enemy dropped a little currency and if shop items were limited to lower grades in the first few areas. So after several hours of playing, I've only just got started on the second level, and while the game so far has been a bit of a slog and at times very frustrating, I've actually really enjoyed playing Hyper Parasite. I've almost unlocked every host in the first level, which has made runs of it a lot easier, and I'm near to unlocking my first character in Asia Town. As a rating, I'd give Hyper Parasite 3 out of 5 stars. I'd recommend it as an entry level roguelike game, as its body snatching mechanic make it very easy to get into though the difficulty spikes are something which really needs sorting out if the game is to compete with the likes of Enter the Gungeon or Binding of Isaac. You can currently get the game on the UK Switch eStore, discounted by 33% for £9.32, and on the US eStore for $11.99. The game's also available on Steam, Xbox and PlayStation 4. And that's all for this review of Hyper Parasite. If you enjoyed this review, please remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for future indie game reviews. For now though, I want to say thanks once again for watching and until next time, game on.